Obviously, it's uh, homecoming. We've got uh, South Dakota in town. Uh, Coach Glenn, he's a guy that uh, was at Wyoming for a while. Just kind of watched him, and uh, he's got a lot of energy. And uh, this guy's guy's playing hard. You know, I know he's disappointed, obviously, in his record, but uh, I see the kids playing hard. Uh, he's an alum of there, so he's got a lot of pride, uh, you know, with that program there. And uh, I think some of his uh, scores have been deceiving. He's played some people, uh, obviously, very close, and then a couple of games have maybe got a little bit out of control as far as the, the final score. But uh, overall, I think their team plays hard. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be excited to come here and play. Obviously, uh, you know, this will be a great environment uh, here, being that it's homecoming and, and all that. And, uh, I think our focus right now as a football team is, is uh, doing what we need to do to try to find a way to win a football game. And uh, can't uh, have uh, breakdowns, you know, and uh, we all know what happened in the second quarter last week. You know, that was a, a major meltdown there in the second quarter that ended up really being the difference in the game. And uh, the glaring thing has been turnovers. Uh, first four games we had one turnover. The last four games we've had, uh, I think it's 10 or 11. So, you know, there's a significant difference there. And we've emphasized it, uh, been emphasizing it. And uh, we got to get that corrected if we expect to win a football game. Eric, how do you correct that? Well, uh, we have been preaching ball security and all those type of things. But uh, I, I think, you know, by having players really understand that if this continues, we're going to have to make a change. You know, uh, and we are all accountable uh, for what we do. Uh, doesn't matter what job you have, what you do. There's an accountability factor there, and uh, we're not going to uh, let guys, you know, uh, continue to uh, put us in, in bad situations. With with the four-game losing streak, how much more can you let those players or? Oh, it's, it, it, we're at the we're at the final we're at the final straw. I mean, uh, we can't we can't go out there and turn the ball over like that. I mean, it's not going to happen. Period. Can you discuss just talk about Kurt? and what he needs to improve on specifically to help that factor of not turning the ball over? Well, obviously, uh, I think there's a lot of factors when you consider, uh, if you're talking about a quarterback, uh, when there's a turnover involved. You know, I think the first thing you look at is, is, what is was there a protection breakdown? You know, and you have to answer the question, yes or no. And I think you have to look at the play that was called. You know, was that the right play? for that coverage. If it is, why did we not execute that play the way it's designed? You know, you have a lot of times a one, two, three, a progression read that you go through. And, you know, you have to be able to see that clearly and uh, execute it. At the same time, uh, when you are working that triangle read or what have you, uh, I think there's also uh, the person that's receiving the ball is correctly getting to the proper landmark or executing the, the play that was designed. You know, for example, if I'm throwing the ball, uh, you know, and you're on a, an under route and I'm expecting you to be here, you know, and you stop on this side and I throw the ball here because I see you running, so I'm going to lead you. And you stop running, what happens? The other guy catches the ball. You know, if I come off of one of my reads too early and go to another guy or just try to make a play, then that could potentially result in a, a bad situation. So those are the kind of things that we evaluate as a staff. So we look at obviously, is there a protection breakdown? Yes, no. Correct play call? Yes, no. Correct scheme? Yes, no. Decision making, yes, no. Receiver route, yes, no. Ball caught, yes, no. Eric, with that being said, any thought of pulling Kurt out for a series or here just to kind of jump start it? Has uh, that gone through your minds at all? The only thing that we've talked about is, is you know, right now our, we can't continue on this path. And uh, we're going to see how the week goes, but we cannot uh, continue to have, uh, you know, these uh, breakdowns. So I'll leave it at that.
Well, I guess just not to, I'm not trying to harp on Kurt, but what does, obviously, everybody's got to play better, but what specifically does Kurt have to do to improve his play? I'm only asking because he was here and yeah. we asked him about that. You know? oh, he's got to execute. He's got to do his being coached to do. I mean, you know, if we tell you to throw the comeback, throw the comeback. I mean, but that comes from everybody, you know. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for anyone. At the end of the day, if it's not getting done, everyone has to do a better job. Receiver needs to run a better route. You need to protect better. You need to make a better decision. And we need to coach you during the week to do that better. You know, so it's never ever going to be one person's fault around here. It's going to be a, a team effort, a group effort. And hey, we at the end of the day, if it's not getting done, we need to coach it better because it, failing failure is not acceptable. You know, failing is something that is not acceptable. It never will be. And we just. At the end of the day, we're not going to make any excuses. That's always been our motto. We're not going to manufacture things. We're not going to throw guys under the bus. We all have to be all in and do a better job to rectify the situation. When you're playing from behind, how does that change the dynamic of the game and, and well, it gets play us, calling in those? It gets us. A, you know, we can't run the ball. You know, when you're down 28-7. You know, 35-7. Uh, it's kind of hard to go out there and just keep running the football, you know, uh, it, 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 you're not going to get back in the game, you know, uh, and we're not there just to try to make it close, we're there to try to win the game, so you got to get back in there and start throwing, I mean, you know, a couple of these games, we have gotten behind by, uh, you know, North Dakota State, got behind by, I mean, had some nice balance early, uh, but then got behind. And all of a sudden, had to start chucking it around a little bit, you know. Uh, same thing with uh, this past week, you know. Going into the second quarter, it's seven-seven ball game, you know. And at seven-seven ball game, we go out there and obviously had a misfortune with the punt, and then uh, you know from there, uh, that gives them seven. Put our defense in a bad situation, and came back with two interceptions in a row. You know, last interception, we're in the red zone. It's getting ready to be a 28-14 ball game with basically two minutes and 30 seconds left, 2.15 in the second quarter. We now have momentum, you know, feeling better about what we're doing and realize we may have a chance to overcome some of the shortfalls. Eric, no team is perfect, obviously. Defense has struggled, offense has struggled, special teams have struggled. Which area is the quickest fix for you? I think the quickest fix really is the turnovers, you know. I think turn the ball over is something. And there's always fluke plays, you know, where you kind of uh, maybe bobble a ball that pops up and those kind of things, or a guy just perfectly puts his helmet on a football or, you know, those kind of things. But uh, I think that's the easiest thing to fix, you know, and uh, something that we expect to fix. I mean, I expect th this situation to be resolved uh, quickly. What is the pulse of the locker room? Uh, you know what? Uh, surprisingly good, you know. Um, you know, I know that's kind of hard to believe, but, you know, we got a bunch of fighters on this team, you know. Uh, you know, on uh, Monday, I guess it was, yeah, it was Monday, I uh, went around the room and, you know, told these guys, you know, we're four and four, you know, get some help from another team. We win, take care of our, some, go win, take care of some of our games, and, you know, who knows what happens, but it's about us in here. And if we just lay down, you know, and, and mail it in, that's not what we're about. That's not what Youngstown's about. That's not what this community expects. And we expect to fight. I mean, we got a bunch of guys in that room that have some very unique stories. You know, Will Shaw's mom, she had cancer. You know, Will, what'd your mom do when she found out she had cancer? She fought through it. She's, she's getting done with her last uh, uh, treatment. You know, she fought it. You know, there's other players in, their, in that room that have lost a significant loved one that's been impacting their life. Did they quit living? No. They're, they're standing here today. They continued their education. They're, they graduated, obviously, from high school. And they're here playing football and getting an education here. They could have quit living. They could have been a high school dropout. So there's a bunch of guys in that room that are fighters, you know, that have had the, the 
been in this situation before. Uh, no different than myself, you know. Nothing can break me, you know. I've had more adversity than than anyone can handle. It's not, not you can't. It's not going to break me, and I'm no different than them. It's we're going to fight together, and one thing we're going to do is we're going to fight. See what happens. Because if you just roll over, it's over, you know. And that's that's not our personality. That's not our makeup of the type of kid that we have here. We came back and fought that second half. Now I had to call him on the rug to they get that done, but that's my job, you know. That's my job. What are you going to do? Just going to go over and lay dead in the second half? You going to let it? You going to let it get out of control? Huh? What are you going to do? You saw how we responded. I mean, you know, eliminate second quarter is a different ballgame. Eric, with that being said, you're on life support for a playoff system. Do you really think this team is good enough to, to make the postseason? If we if we get rid of the turnovers, we can we can uh, honestly play up to anybody. First first four games, we had the ball 36 times, scored. 24 times, 26 times. I mean, that's unheard of, you know. So, we we at the end of the day, we control what we do. You know, we control how we play. And if we eliminate the turnovers, if we can eliminate turnovers, we can have success. You brought Shane down for the second half. Will that continue, or is that was just a one shot deal? We're still talking about it. You know, um, I, I like the energy. Uh, I like the ability to get the ability to get. Uh, you know, face to face with your quarterback. Uh, I think there's there's value there, especially when uh, maybe things aren't going as well as you want. But uh, you know, it's still still in discussion. Let's put it that way. Coach, Where's how much? What? At? Where's this program at at this point in your tenure? Uh, as far as like, what do you mean? Is it as successful as it needs to be? Is it? Yeah, you know, I mean, are you building is well, this team? I mean, it, you know, I think the thing is is. We can, when we came in here, uh, we were asked to do a job, and the job was obviously to, to get back to where everyone's expectations are. And I think, uh, you know, you, there's two approaches you can take. You can uh, try to go a quick fix route and turn your eye to discipline issues, turn your eye to uh, guys not doing things right and try to play them out and play with them, or you can set a very high standard for doing things right and having discipline and being accountable for the way you handle yourself on and off the field. And we took the no-nonsense approach. So at the same time, you know, probably maybe uh, set some things back uh, initially, but set a, uh, set a tone that there's an expectation of the way things need to be done. So, you know, that's kind of what was done. And that's what, that's what I'm about, I'm about doing things the right way, working hard and being accountable for what you do, being accountable for uh, everything that takes place in your program and the perception of it. Coach, what do you think the ratio is of you um, being at fault for your own mistakes and other teams looking at those first four weeks or so figuring out, well, here's what Youngstown State does, here's what we have to do to disrupt that. And creating a lot of situations that put you in in a bad uh, in a bad situation. I think you know we played the last four teams. We played four. I mean, our last five, six games we played some really good teams. But the last four teams we played were very good. That's well documented. Probably the toughest stretch that this school may has 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 had. Being that three of them were road games, one was home. You know. I don't know if there's a tougher stretch. You know, it's a pretty tough stretch, obviously. But uh, I think, you know, if you eliminate the turnovers, there's different results. You know, so I mean, there's it's always it's always glaring that uh, if the you're not taking care of the football, you're not going to win. And, I mean, I can't be any clearer than telling you. The first four games, you know, we had the ball. We had, we possessed the ball of possessions that you wanted to do something with. We scored 24 times. I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, there's very few people in the country that can do that. Against Pitt, Albany, decent team, Valparaiso, Northern Iowa. When Northern Iowa still had something to play for. Then you look at the next four games. You have 11 turnovers. 
and you put your defense, I mean, we put our defense in a horrible situation on Saturday. Absolutely horrible as far as giving them a short field with the punt and the interception. I mean, there's, there's 14 right there. And then you look at the fact that uh, North Dakota State, we gave them a short field several times there. Southern Illinois, we gave them a short field numerous times when you include the punt and then the fumbled snap, you know, to the quarterback there through the end zone. So there's a whole bunch of points right there to me that have made the difference in these, these four games. And, you know, if if you don't throw it if you don't throw it to the guy that's open, you know, or throw it away, then, you know, he made the wrong decision. I mean it's that simple, you know. Where are you at with injuries and help right now? I'd say we're probably a little bit banged up, you know, but we're not we're not gonna use that as an excuse. You know. I'm not gonna stand here and make excuses. I'm doing my best to give you guys all the answers you want, but I promise you, uh, I'm not an excuse guy. But we are a little bit banged up. You know, last week we played Stephen Page, uh, first time he's ever played, started at center. And uh, DJ Main went out the second half because uh, of uh, just being banged up. Radakovich hasn't played. Uh, so there's, you know, three starting alignment that didn't play last week that, I mean, one played a half. But, you know, we're a little bit banged up. But that's part of this stretch. We've had an unbelievable stretch of games. You know, when you looked all the way back, basically, to, to Albany, who I think is a decent team, you know. You got, there's a stretch there of, of physical, good football teams, and that's where the, 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 the guys being banged up a little bit are, are in the offensive side of the ball. Eric, as far as South Dakota, is it difficult to prepare for a team that you haven't seen in person, so to speak? No, because, before? no you can see you can see on opponents that you, you, you know and you play. So I, I, when I watch them play, uh, I can tell that their coach has a lot of energy. He's got them playing. Uh, and, you know, you got to always expect them to come in here and just lay it all on, out on the table, you know. Uh, it's two teams that haven't had success uh, recently, and what's to lose? You know, what's really to lose? Talk a little bit about them systematically and what challenges they Offensively, uh, you know, I, I think they do a good job of keeping you honest. You know, they have enough quarterback run game that uh, you have to be accountable at all times for the quarterback, along with the running back. Uh, he's a guy that will uh, keep the football and run it, so uh, they'll do a good job with that. He's got two good receivers. He's got a, a good size offensive line, you know, like a lot of those Dakota schools, some decent sized kids. But, uh, you know, I, I like the running back, 32, Sims. He's a, he's a nice looking kid that uh, runs pretty good, and quarterback is obviously a threat to run the football, too. Uh, defensively, you know, they base out of a three-man front, uh, a lot of pressure, uh, like to run a lot of different games and stunts as far as trying to create confusion for your offensive line, uh, run a couple uh, different coverages there, but uh, they rely primarily on getting pressure on you, whether it's uh, getting the run or the pass, and, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to hit their gaps and, and to get stalemates there on the last scrimmage or get penetration for... Uh, tackles for a loss. They've, uh, they've, they've, uh, they've played some people pretty well. You know, even going back to the Northwestern game, watching them there. You know, that's a Big Ten team, and uh, they did some good things there in that game, and and have played well against some good people.